It is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by Charles Belt, who is in his first season or heading toward his first season as the head men's basketball coach for Oklahoma Panhandle State. He was just announced as the Aggies men's basketball coach in March. Coach, let me just start right there. Congratulations on the new gig and talk about your excitement to be in Goodwill. Yeah, uh, it's it's wonderful. I, I've, I've said multiple times that uh, God's timing uh, is always perfect. And, uh, you know, I had, I had gotten to a point where I had prayed about it, was really looking at continuing the ministry. Now, I like to call it a ministry at a different uh, location. And it just kind of fell right into place. I, I had a few places that I had interviewed with, uh, a couple options on my table. And when I sat down and really evaluated myself, my family, what OPSU had to offer and what uh, the opportunity meant to, to be able to do something and build a legacy here, it, it was a no brainer. So I'm uh, really excited to be here today. Uh, marks the end of my first actual week on campus and I can't wait to get going. I want to talk about that here in just a moment. And I appreciate your perspective on, on how you look at coaching and, and, and what you do there. Uh, let's go back really quickly. You, you come to Oklahoma Panhandle state by way of William Woods spent four years in Fulton, Missouri, and talk about your time there just a little bit as you're making that transition. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I gave a huge thank you to uh, Dr. Uh, Vanita Mitchell, was our was our VP, Dr. Barnett, and uh, Jason Vittoni, Director Vittoni, were, were the three that brought me to William Woods. Uh, I was a young, ambitious, uh, animated, maybe might be a good word, uh, coach uh, that they gave an opportunity to run the program at William Woods. And it's... Uh, it was a blessing, the the chance to really get out there and to turn the blueprint of the ministry of being able to bring high academic young men, high talent, uh, low ego, I say, to a university and then be able to also have success on the basketball court. And so to put that all together, to see that vision actually um, manifest was really amazing uh, in our time there. We were able to have success on the court. We never had under a 3.3 GPA in the entire time that we were at William Woods. And uh, sadly, we couldn't break through that glass ceiling. We got to the AMC semifinal back-to-back -back years and just never could punch through. And and our our league, there is a one-bid league, uh, quite frankly. It, it's, a, it's a conference where if you don't win the tournament, you're not, you're not making the national dance. Uh, you're not making the national tournament. And so those things kind of – way on you at some point you're looking and going man i feel like we have an, a team that could compete nationally and uh when we weren't really able to break through the glass ceiling some changes occurred at the university and uh, i looked and prayed about it and so you know it's probably the time to find that next opportunity that next challenge and 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 a way to really push what we're doing from the ministry forward and so i always say the ministry is not a destiny uh not a location it's a destination and so uh, we're at the next destination. And that next destination is Goodwill, Oklahoma, in the panhandle of Oklahoma, affectionately known as No Man's Land. I know you're getting familiar with that phrase as well. A nice facilities out there. And, and you've been uh, showing some of your great facilities at Oklahoma Panhandle on social media of late. Talk about the, the, new, the new digs. Yeah, so I, I had never, just being honest, I had not heard of OPSU. I, I didn't know anything about Oklahoma Panhandle State University. And so... You know, getting out here and being able to get boots on the ground, I like to say, right? We have a wealth of 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 just resources to provide student athletes with the opportunity to do what I believe in any sport, every student athlete is trying to accomplish. You, you want the opportunity to get your degree, of course. Um, we have a phenomenal academic dean. We are under the OSU umbrella. So we're actually part of the Oklahoma State University umbrella. We're a state school. And so we're able to provide the academic portfolio that any student would want. Um, you then take, of course, the athletics part, you know, student athlete. Uh, and I was just mind blown. Our, our, our arena seats about 1,500, I believe. I, I have kind of a weird, I'm a math major, so... Uh, my OCD kicks in every now and then, and I count it every seat. So we have uh, 1561, if you want to be exact. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, I mean, it's a wonderful venue to play at. Brand new court. We just 
redid the floor um, two years, two seasons ago. Uh, training staff and training room, whirlpools, uh, hot tub, cold tub, you name it. Our, we have a, the media conference room. I don't know if you've ever been there. Um, kind of our media conference, film room that we can utilize. Our weight room, most weight rooms, you complain not about the equipment. You complain about the space. You're like, oh, there's not enough space to do everything. We have the opportunity to do our plyo, uh, our weight training, our cardio, um, the football coaching. Now we're talking about even trying to get a, a line of, of turf in there so we can kind of do some sleds and some work there. I mean, it is just a phenomenal space and and it's a great home here. Uh, the university and, and, and the community is very welcoming, very inviting. Uh, our rec center actually here on campus is for our students, but you can also purchase um, memberships. The, the local YMCA, I do a lot of things with the YMCA Boys and Girls Club, uh, sadly is, is no longer open in, good, uh, in Guymon. And so I know that most YMCAs provide a fitness center as well. And so, you know, we are able to do that here on campus and provide memberships for people to utilize our rec, our weight facilities there, uh, the swimming pool. We have a swimming pool here, two full basketball courts, indoor track, racquetball, you name it. And so it's just, it's exciting. It's exciting to know that the young men that I'm able to bring here are going to be able to fully complete the student athlete portfolio. And that for me is, is, is so valuable because that's why we're in this business. Um, we're here to give these young men and young women, if you're on the women's side, an opportunity to excel as students, but also the opportunity to be the best athlete that they can be. And I feel that at OPSU, we're able to provide that. We're speaking now with Charles Belt, who is the new men's basketball coach at Oklahoma Panhandle State University here on the Summit on Midwest Sportsnet. And I encourage you, please, continue to enjoy videos here on the channel. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And again, with Coach Belt now. Coach, your introductory press conference, and I, wanted, I, I said I wanted to talk about a couple of those things, not just the facilities there, but how you approach this. And I appreciate you talking about it in the fact that it is a ministry, but you said right off the bat that one of the things that the players have already heard from you and would continue to hear from you uh, is the fact that our talents are God's gift to us. What we do with those talents is our gift back to him. I hope I said that close to right. All Perfect. right. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, talk about that a little bit and, and uh, your philosophy with that. So what, what I look at, and, and I'm, I'm a, man now from the inner city of Chicago, West side, I grew up on the West side of Chicago and basketball has provided the opportunity for life changing um, journeys, right? I've been blessed to have 13 first generation college graduates and the ability for them to get a degree changes every aspect. It changes their current situation, but statistically, we know that that men, especially that hold bachelor's degrees, if you go on to a graduate degree, uh, their their households are, are more likely to to also pursue post secondary education. Their children, their grandchildren, etc. And so the what we're doing here is not basketball. Basketball is our, our our channel. It's our instrument. What we're doing here is actually providing a ministry for young men to find a way, whether that's enhancing where they're currently at or changing where they're currently at. And so what I look at is, is, is anything that we do, whatever venue it is that you're in, whether that's sports or that's business, whether that's, um, you know, ed, your, your teacher and in, in education, what we have, our, 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 I always say it, our talents, right? What we are just naturally very good at don't happen by accident. Um, you know, the, the, the Bible tells us that I, I, I give you the desires and then I allow you the ability to execute the desires of our hearts. Those things come, in my opinion, spiritually. And when we have those, our talents to do those desires are a gift. That's a gift. That, that is, that is a, a blessing to be able to, whether that's lead, to be able to um, go out and, and compete on a basketball court. Our players are way more than basketball players to go out and to minister as ambassadors of our program and our university in different avenues, whether that's in the community or on campus. Those things are all gifts. And, and what we do with them, if we 
if we don't exercise those gifts that are given to us, then essentially we're never giving back. And 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 your give back is yes, community, yes, your campus community, um, yes, to your family, whether you're a brother or or father, if you have the opportunity to be a father. Ultimately, though, the blessings come from here, and my they, they come down, and then when we uh, exude those those gifts and those talents, we're returning that gift. And 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 it says uh, biblically that I take pleasure that the biggest praise reports that we give is watching the success of my children. Um, you know, our father is is not an earthly father, but the mindset is very similar. As as a father, you love seeing your children succeed. You love seeing the the things that you've instilled in them be put on display. And and this game has allowed us a platform to display those gifts and to display those blessings. And I view this game, if you'd like to say, way more from that perspective. I say basketball is basketball. I always say this. Basketball is basketball. And what I mean by that is a ball screen is a ball screen. An offensive rebound is an offensive rebound. A three is a three. A block shot is a block shot. We're not reinventing the wheel, right? Like there's, there's nothing that's being done in basketball right now that hasn't been done over the last 40 years of the game. Steph Curry is, is a phenomenal, phenomenal player. Sharif Abdul-Rahim was very similar in the way he played the game. You know, years ago with Chris Paul, they were doing Lob City. You know, they're on fly, fly slam, fly slam a That was what that was, right? Like, so uh, John Stockton and Carl Malone, pick and roll, wing, pick and roll, hit the roll, man, let him make a play. Nothing's new in basketball, <laughs> you know? And so because of that, what differentiates, in my opinion, programs and teams are coaches use the buzzword culture. And I, I, because I'm the son of a minister, I love the approach of ministry. It's not a culture. We're ministering to these young men. And, and when they buy in, they then are also ministering to this campus. They don't always know that, but that's what they're doing. And that for me is the vision. And, and, and I hope leaving William Woods, we were able to do something there that will leave a legacy. People will always remember the era uh, of Charles Belt basketball at William Woods and the era of the players and the men that came through that program. Now let's do it here. And and I'm really, really excited uh, to, to see the ministry on display uh, on a platform that, quite frankly, is a little bit larger than what we came from. I understand. I, I completely understand. Listen, I got a lot out of that. I, I, I don't want to end right now, but I, I, I definitely could walk away from our conversation uh, <laughs> feeling good about a lot of things. I, I appreciate that, Coach. And uh, let, let me ask you then, uh, as you are, uh, well, you're one of the new men on the block there, but not the only one. It's a, it's a wave of new coaches, uh, fall sports in particular. There were three announcements during the month of March. Yours, as well as new head coach Corey Miller for football, Nick Sarowski, and volleyball as well. It's it's kind of a, a new wave in Goodwill at Oklahoma Panhandle State. Yeah, so our um, director of Sparza, or some people call him Coach Sparza. If, if I still do, if, if, uh, if you're following, he, he was he was here as as a women's basketball coach. I. Part of why I chose, let's, let, I'll, I'll back up. Part of why I chose OPSU was when I sat down with Dr. Dinger, our president, and Director Sparza, there's a spirit that, 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 that comes with them. And I am, I always say this, I, I, we all would love God to tell us, go here. You know, I say that in recruiting, you know, go play for Coach Bell. No. Um, it doesn't happen that way. What does happen is we get a peace, we get a calm. Um, I feel like those are his ways of talking to us when it's time to talk to us. And when I sat down with them and I, I was given the blueprint and the vision of where we want OPSU athletics to go and where Dr. Dinger wants this university to go as a whole, so not just in the athletic department, I got a peace. I, and, and that wave that I believe everyone is starting to see, and we haven't had the opportunity to display that on our fields and on our courts yet, is just a part of the pieces falling into that blueprint. Uh, there's a level of excellence 
There's a level of pride. Dr. Dengar says panhandle pride. I love I love when she says that um, of what it means to be here. And as someone that wasn't here and let's just be honest, didn't know about OPSU. Um, one of the young men that were on a visit yesterday, he literally he and his family drive past here. They've driven past her all the time and never have stopped. Right. We have to change that. We have to we have to get to a point where this again, I was talking about ministry as a location versus ministry as a destination. This becomes a destination. You want to come here. You want to be a part of what we're doing um, on this campus. You want to be a part of what we're doing in the athletic department. And I feel like if you add all those pieces and all these new personalities, uh, having very limited, like I said, this is the first week I've been here of working. Co Coach Nick is, is maybe 15 steps from me. Brilliant mind. Um, but not just that, really, really cares about the young ladies, really cares about the young women of his program. When you start to do that collectively, I believe in the five pillars of success, that's one of them. And that's the first one, being non-transactional in our relationships with our players, with our community, with our university, non-transactional. And, and in the time that I've had, we're bringing in a lot of personalities and coaches that excel in that part. And it's under Director Esparza's vision and it's under Dr. Dinger's vision. And that blueprint is what I'm really excited to uh, to pour into uh, and, and, and to see it overflow as, as we do that here. Well, I, for one, am looking forward to seeing that executed and to see the results of that and how that uh, pans out for OPSU. Coach, one last question then for the fans who are watching now and the folks who are going to be seeing your program in the next year and, and years, uh, what should they expect to see on the court then from a Coach Belt coached team? What's what's the product? What's the intent for the product to look like? Yes. Uh, so number one is I am a defensive-minded coach. Um, in, a, in an era of basketball where everybody wants to play faster, Everybody wants to shoot more threes. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I guess you want to say old school, <laughs> if that if that even means anything there well, in listen, that regard. You can have a five slam a jamma, which by the way, Clyde Drexler is still my favorite player of all time. So you can you can be old school. I'm I'm here. It's all right. Go ahead. Um, we're going to defend. So any any anybody that comes and watches us play, you're going to see a team that puts forth an immense amount of effort and pride on the defensive end. I've had here in the NAI for four years running, I've had a top five defense in the country um, in, in points per game against uh, opponents field goal percentage, opponents three point percentage, and then block shots per game. We've led the country three years in a row in block shots per game. Um, we we defend, that. that's the end of the basketball court that I value. And, and my reasoning for that is, <clears throat> excuse me, I always tell our guys, defense gets on the bus. No matter where you go, no matter what venue you play in, what the backdrop looks like, what the weather is, um, how you slept that night, your defense travels. Your, your defense can always travel. Offense carries a lot of variables. You know, are you shooting well that night? Is the ball going for you? Um, you know, the venue may be different. You know, you're looking at the lighting. A lot of things play in, in the, into offense. Uh, we're going to be a team that people are going to watch and they're going to go, wow, that team takes pride on the defensive end. Uh, offensively, we're way more motion based. I've never had an individual average more than 14 points per game. Uh, we have seven to eight guys that average between seven to 12, 13 points. We're a very equal opportunity from an offensive standpoint. We're motion based. We're ball movement, man movement. So what I what I hope when a fan leaves a game. When a fan leaves a game, I want them to be able to say a couple things. Number one is I want them to say that team plays exceptionally hard. They compete, win or lose, they compete at a level that shows how much they value the name on the front, right? Because we're playing for something bigger than ourselves. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I want teams to look at or say, or not teams, but, but fans to say, those guys love playing together. They, they, they love playing together. They love playing for Coach Belt. They love playing for this program. Uh, ELE, everybody love everybody, 
Um, when we leave the basketball floor, those are the two things I want fans to be able to say, to, to look and go, wow, that team competes. They play exceptionally hard. They defend. And, man, that chemistry is, is phenomenal to watch. Those guys love each other. They love playing for this program. They love playing for their brother right next to them. And, and if those two things are there, I talk about those pillars of success. Um, that's one of the pillars. If those things are there, you give yourself an opportunity to win. I never talk about winning. It, it's funny on my press conference, people are like, man, coach, you never talked about basketball. I don't, I don't, I don't talk about winning because winning is a result of the equation. And if you're able to check all the variables, it doesn't guarantee you win. It guarantees you give yourself the best opportunity to win. And now basketball, again, basketball is basketball. A few things have to go your way. You got to get a stop here late. I mean, there's so much talent, right? I mean, we're in the Sooner Athletic Conference. My opinion, being in the AMC and looking at this league, the best league in NAIA basketball. I mean, we put three to four teams in the national tournament every year. The the last team to make the tournament from our league was 14 and eight in conference. Right. Like that. That's for not like that's the respect this conference has. We're going to go out there on that court and we're going to play extremely talented young men and extreme. I'm a coach against extremely talented coaches. Can we give ourselves the best opportunity to win by always hitting the five pillars? And then we got to go out there. And I would say in the last two minutes, you have to make more plays than mistakes. And if you're able to do that, the outcome more often than not comes on, on your favor and then the side that you want it. So that's what you're going to get. That, uh, uh, that, that's what you're going to get from watching the coach belt uh, team. Defense, passion, love, uh, and, and a pride for the name on the front. I look forward to seeing that. Absolutely look forward to seeing that. Coach Charles Bell, thank you so much. I, I've appreciated the time. We're uh, heading toward Easter then, and I know there's a lot going on. Of course, you have a lot more to do to get ready for uh, the rest of the, the even the school year, the summer, and heading into 23-24. Thank you, sir, for taking time with us today here on the summit. We really appreciate that, and we will definitely be following the progress there at Oklahoma Panhandle State. Love it. I, I appreciate your time. Thank you for the uh, the coverage. Um I'm I'm really really excited to <clears throat> give everyone in the in this area an opportunity to see something special. I I, I truly believe we're going to do something special because, as I've said in the press, God, God makes no mistakes, and His timing is His timing is perfect. It's always about timing. His timing is perfect. He never tells us no. Sometimes He says not yet. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes He says you're not ready. Uh, but he never tells us no. And when he tells us yes, he's already opened the door. Um, you know, the, the this is I call it tomorrow's Resurrection Sunday. I don't I don't call it Easter Sunday. It's Resurrection Sunday. And um, yes, he, 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 he tells us I go to prepare a place for you. Right. That, that, that That's a very strong scripture that I love to stand by. I go to prepare a place for you, which means that every door that you walk through, the preparation's already been there. It's laid out for you to to walk into your blessing and walk into your purpose. And here at OPSU, I, I truly felt he prepared this place for me. And I can't wait to walk through the door. So um, we're going to have a great time. We're going to have a great time. I, I can't wait till the next time I get to talk to you. So that's <laughs> Fantastic. Amen. Amen. You see, by the way, when you see our stuff on social media for all of our social media sites, no matter what, that is how you will see it. Happy Resurrection Sunday. So that's how you'll see it this weekend. Coach Bell, God bless you, sir. Thank you for your time. Amen. Thanks a lot.